let's uh, see what the next movie is. Okay, so this movie is called Falling In with Two N's Love. So I wonder what this one's about. I entered a win and in contest. You've won an inn, located in New Zealand. That was a virus. Girlie, that was a virus on your computer. If that was real, you would have gotten kidnapped. So, a 13 hour flight to Auckland and three bus rides later. She's going to Auckland. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I will pay for any of the damages. Haha, <laughs> I'm officially the owner. <laughs> Never assume anything on the internet matches his profile picture. I'm getting to that age where I like like the 35, 30 year old moves into a new city. <laughs> the high school rom-coms. I love them still, but like these are hitting different now. And she meets this like random guy. Like it's kind of hitting different now. She's a beaut. She sure is. No, we don't care. Did I, I just see the entire movie? This looks cute. And he looks cute. <laughs> this looks cute. I'm excited for my 4 a.m. viewing of falling in love. It's too late for this. Starbucks opens soon though. Why are they wanting me to watch the lucky one so much? Like I, I can't do that. Why don't I watch movies like this all the time? It puts me in such a better mood. They're so light and fun and not too serious. I love it. See ya when I get back from Auckland. It just said the movie is rated PG for fear. Does it mean I'm fearing or they're fearing? Are we both fearing? I don't want fear. This is not what I came here for. I didn't come here for fear. Anyway, let's watch Falling in Love with a picture of a key next to it. Dean just showed up. Excuse you. <gasps> she closed the door with her iPad. <laughs> Nori, we're in New Zealand. <sighs> When he's talking about goats, but he looks good talking about them. <laughs> Is this movie sponsored by iPads? Because she's been carrying around an iPad the whole time. The Kiwi way of life. No, 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 Jake, don't run away. Oh, I forgot he was a firefighter. <laughs> He's a fire too, guys. A volunteer fireman. When he's a beekeeper, a renovator, a volunteer fireman, has a six pack. If she's not in love with him now, I don't know what else he has to do. Oh, she was very blunt with him. She said, see ya. She said, you're checking out for good, sir. Out of the inn. You're not checking in. You're checking out. <laughs> he flew all the way to New Zealand to see her. And she's like, you're not my person. You're checking out for good. And he's like, okay. Good luck. Ooh, why is that kiss so awkward? <laughs> I don't know if it's just 5 a.m. or if that kiss is really awkward. Why are the goats such an integral part of this movie? I guess it's for comedic relief. Oh. 
So we finished Falling in Love. The title kind of gives away the ending. It's 5.30 in the morning and we're not thriving. If we're being honest, we're not thriving right now. My comprehension level has slowly gone downhill. One of my favorite lines was right at the beginning when all these businessmen are walking into an office and one of them says, so I said to him, I'm not paying those taxes. Her friend was giving some, you know, pretty solid advice. She said they had been in a relationship for a while, I guess. And she was like, you just gotta lay down the law. You just gotta give him an ultimatum. You gotta say a, a, a rock or you walk. It was giving fan fiction. It was really giving fan fiction, especially in the beginning, like how they met. It was like more than a meet cute. It was like a meet adorable, you know, a meet adorbs. Because she was like walking down the road with her suitcase. The suitcase hits his car and that's how they meet. And she's like, ew, like who are you? And the thing is, she didn't have any reason not to like him. He was like, she's kind of weird, but like, in a good way. But she was like, if he pulls up, girl, you're not gonna be like, she's like, I don't take rides from strangers. I'm like, you were taking that lift, girl. You can take, you can take a ride in the, in the car with the attractive New Zealand man. It was rated PG because of fear. And there were some parts that were kind of scary. Like they were talking about the inn being haunted. Like this underlying thing about it being haunted. Plus this goat is just chilling around and it keeps scaring her. And she at one point like almost could have gotten impaled and died. Lots of physical comedy. It was giving Liza Koshy. And there was this one scene where they were laying down the grout. And it was like, I'll help you. You know, I'll help you. Um, I thought it was pretty cute. Yeah, it was just like a lighthearted, but at times terrifying rom-com. They moved so slow though. That was one of those slow burn romances. Like, she was there for months and they didn't kiss. Like, okay. Alright, that's believable. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna sleep a little bit because if I keep going like this, like I won't be able to go on. See you in the morning. Hey. Ooh. So I just went to Starbucks with my dad. Got vanilla latte, spinach fedora. Oh, that just got all over the table. Hello. Hey, hey. And a venti ice water. Yes, we're ready to watch two more movies. Are we though? Are we really though? Like, are we ever really ready to watch five Netflix rom-coms within 24 hours? I don't know. The next one is called Always Be My Maybe. Don't remember this one. Oh, this one looks cute, I think. Okay. We are catching up with celebrity chef Sasha Trent and her fiance, Brandon Choi. What a great cause, huh? Uh. So this is giving me Hallmark, but even better. Like her boyfriend doesn't like her. That was like the last movie. She'll go find someone who really loves her, you know? Which we love it. Uh, hey. Hi, Marcus. Yeah, hi, Sasha. Hi, hello, hi. Long time. It's an old friend thing. You and Marcus are so cute. Mm. Oh, oh. Remind me why you never got together? There's way too much history there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's oh. way too much history there. Oh. No, 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 it's one of those. I don't know if I can handle this. Always be my baby, but they change just to make me. Oh my god. Uh -huh. D. 
didn't know Keanu Reeves was in this movie. Hey, oh my goodness, that's me. Okay. Oh, now I'm going to be getting all these suggestions that are solely rom-coms. And I'm okay with it. Always be my maybe. We are bopping. There's some bops in this movie. I've been just dancing. Bop after bop. I was just almost crying 30 seconds ago and then they bring out the bops. Oh. It's like they're talking straight to me. They're like, sooner or later, you gotta take a chance on something. I'm like. Did she buy all of his merch? She bought all of his merch. Is that not the most romantic thing you've ever heard? Oh, it's still going. That was baby was cute. That was a cute baby. Like they grew up together and then they didn't see each other for 16 years and then they fall in love. So it's all good. <sighs> One of my favorite lines was, your car smells like Parmesan. I have a bunch of Parmesan in the glove compartment. Oh, and her first man, uh-uh. He was giving like legitimate red flags. Of course he was supposed to be like a huge red flag, but he was like, we should see other people so that we're sure that we want to be together. Uh -huh. If someone says that to you, run, sprint, lunge. I realized that I like the trope that I've seen this in a few movies where the guy and the girl that you know will end up together go on a double date with each of their significant others. I like that um, dynamic, I guess, in movies. Um, the fact that Keanu Reeves was like a big part of this movie. From the trailer, I was like, okay, maybe he just has like a cameo or something. No. He's like a big part of this movie and he plays himself. When he walks in, it's like slow-mo and he looks so cool, like his hair and everything. He's just like cool. He's so cool. And another thing that I noticed that I like about these kind of rom-coms is that there's no like real conflict or the conflict lasts for a good five minutes and then we're good. I was laughing at parts and stuff and I was like, wow, iconic. It takes a lot to get me to laugh. Okay, but I thought this was cute and funny. It was slightly giving me Napoleon Dynamite at some points, and that's that's what I love. That's what that's how I live, love, love. I think I'm gonna go eat, then I'll come back and watch the last movie. I'm excited. So the last movie we're gonna watch is called Afterlife of the Party. Another good pun. I have this crazy idea. Instead of going out, what if we just stay home? Yeah, no, we're not staying in. It's Victoria Justice. Haven't seen her in a while, so I'm excited. I'm a victorious stan, of course. Yeah, um, you died. I died in the bathroom? Did that go viral? Is that the first thing she says? I can't do this with the Netflix writers. So she literally passes away. So... And my dad, he's a mess. I miss you, kiddo. Sorry for not pissing you much. I'm gonna let you know I'm okay. What did he play in? Hold on, sorry. <laughs> he played in Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. That's where I remember him from. And he plays her dad. Okay, 
I'm interested to see how this movie's gonna go. I haven't, I can't really tell if I'm gonna be into it or not. I'm hoping it's gonna be like, just like Heaven with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo, like that kind of thing. That was a great movie. So I'm hoping it's gonna be kind of like that. All right, well, see you later. Gotta get some food in my tongue. Ooh. <laughs> So I'm back from eating and it's time to watch Afterlife of the Party. So much food on my table. Okay, good. The camera's about to die. Good. Oh, maybe not after. <laughs> maybe not today. We can't do it hard and there she is. There's Victoria Justice. I think we're all on Netflix. All right. She will never live that down. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gertie. An hour and 49 minutes. Good. See y'all then. Look at this emoji pillow. It's everything it has the poop and everything. For the last 15 minutes, and I have not been crying. I have not been crying already. Her friend reminds me way too much of myself, and it's kind of scaring me. Like, I'm in this movie, and I don't like it. She's terrified of everything, doesn't know how to talk to people. She's me. No explanation. I mean, with no commentary because this movie is actually so sad to me for some reason. It's not even that sad, but it's, it's making me sad. The fact that she's actually like passed away is just an underlying sad thing in this movie. Because in Just Like Heaven, she was in a coma, and then of course she like comes back from the coma. But in this, no, 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 he's singing the song that he sang to her as a kid. I can't do it though. Like, I actually cannot. Mm -mm. This is too sad. I thought this was rom-com light-hearted moment. No, 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 no. They almost have the same TV stand as me. Icons. This is way too emotional, existential. Are they gonna show her going to heaven? When the disaster struck again, I was able to save a few people, but I didn't make it. <laughs> so sorry. Said that we were supposed to meet. No way. twist than any M. Night Shyamalan movie I have ever seen. If you don't want spoilers, skip ahead. So she's on the elevator up to heaven and a guy comes in and gets on the elevator and it's the guy that's the lead singer of the band that she's obsessed with. So the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, he has also passed away. How did he pass away, you may ask? And don't forget, she just saw him a couple days earlier on a music video shoot. So he was fine then. He was working for disaster relief. And he said they managed to save some people, but he didn't make it. And he was like, I feel like we were supposed to be. I feel like I know you already. God. No, that was too much. I was so, like that was the most shocking ending. Top five twist endings of all time. Wow, they need to do like an ending explained for this movie or do a deep dive into this movie. Um, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm just so confused. Okay, I'm so distraught. I think I'm distraught. 
I think that would be a good word for it. And they say, impromptu dance party with my best friend since first grade. That's what she says in the first minute of the movie so that we know for sure that they've been best friends since first grade. And she also says, bye bestie since we were six. And I'm like, I have never said that to anyone in my life. Bye person that I met two years ago. See, I would say the other movies were cute, but this one was actually sad. I found it actually sad. That was a literal roller coaster of emotions. There are none of these that I wouldn't recommend watching that I just thought were absolutely awful. I think all of them were at least entertaining. I would probably rewatch The Royal Treatment and always be my maybe. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go try not to be sad now. Like literally what was that? I think we're all in rom-coms.